Welcome to Cooking with Kathy Scott and Friends. Today's a very special episode. It's New Year's. We're going to kick it off by heading down and seeing what Kathy's got going on. So Kathy, take it away. Now we are on to our appetizer, which is a luxurious caviar pie. And to do a caviar pie, you need a springform pan, some butter to start off with. We're going to have chopped eggs, sour cream, cream cheese, a little mayonnaise to mix up with those eggs, and of course, caviar. That will be in the second step. Because for the first step, you want to put all those ingredients together, and then you're going to chill it for three hours before then you put the caviar on top. So let's begin. We have minced red onions. Now my son, my sometime sous chef, minced up all these nice red onions and they have been draining for about 30 minutes. You need to get the water out of them so it doesn't spread all over the pie and mess up your beautiful creation. So mince your onions and then you can drain them. You can find the recipes uh, at the end and you can make this yourself for a wonderful holiday treat. So while the onions are draining, take that nice spring form pan, spring form pan, easy for me to say, and we're going to just lightly butter it. This will help it not stick when your guests come to put in a nice uh, little uh, spoonful or a knifeful of the pie itself onto an appetizer plate. This goes so quickly. I've brought it to lots of parties. What are you going to bring? I'll bring the appetizer and a caviar pie. And it always sounds so, so rich and luxurious. And it is, but really it isn't that expensive to make. And it's pretty easy. So once you have buttered your pan, then you put away the butter, and then you're going to take five hard boiled eggs. I have pre hard boiled these eggs and then chop them. And I have done four already. Some recipes say six, some recipes say uh, four, so I am such a moderate, I mean, I'm like right in the middle here. And so I have hard boiled five eggs and now I'm chopping the last one. I am going to mix these eggs up with three tablespoons of mayonnaise. So <laughs> I have to tell you this story. Um, I was very blessed to go on a cruise and I was going to make a speech about family affair and the power of perseverance and what Hollywood is like. And so we, um, I could take a guest. And so my husband didn't want to go. And then I asked my son who was about 14 at the time, no, he didn't want to go. So I asked one of my best friends, Ellen, Ellen, you want to go with me? Sure. That'll be great. Then she decided that she wanted to bring her son. So she got a cabin for her son, and then guess who wanted to go? My son. So I had to buy him a cabin, whereas I was being, you know, given a nice cruise gratis. So I, I spent money on the cruise. But while I'm telling you this story is that they had a big feast uh, on the cruise. And the last thing that came uh, at the cruise, actually it was the first thing, was this great big plate of uh, eggs. And then the next waiter came with onions. And the next waiter came with um, sour cream. And the next one came with uh, cream cheese. And then the pièce de résistance, there was the caviar. Well, my son, who was then an aficionado of caviar since he was four years old, I diverge a minute, but our former neighbors, he worked for Chevron and they got this fabulous caviar from Turkey. So they were having a cocktail party and we were invited and I brought my little four-year-old. And so I saw him over where the caviar was and he had brown bread and then he was having so much fun putting egg and onion and of course the caviar and cream cheese. 
He said, mm. Then he took another one, and then another one, and then my neighbor went over and said, Reed, perhaps somebody else would like some caviar. So that started him on his journey. And then he did a television show with um, the, the fellow that Don, I can't remember his name right now, but Stephanie Zimbalist played his mother. Well, she loved caviar, and they just related and gave him the name of this fabulous caviar place in New York. Thank you, Stephanie. I really am not going to have, you know, uh, the caviar that's kept frozen flown in. But this nice caviar is just fine lump fish caviar. So anyway, on the cruise, when he found out that they were serving the caviar and that he could request it every night, he did. So this child, now teenager, at 14 had caviar every night. So this, no doubt telling you, is his favorite um, dish that I make, his favorite appetizer. All right, so onward and upward. We have the chopped eggs, and now we're going to mix it with three tablespoons of mayonnaise. I like the real mayonnaise. I don't like the, the goat. Although I think what is, is good, they make a light mayonnaise. Which, which is quite good. And so many times I'll get the light mayonnaise and I can still have the, the wonderful taste of the mayonnaise without you know, so many of the calories. You know, as we get older, we've got to uh, watch our calories and our cholesterol. So that's why I'm having eggs and mayonnaise. But you know, it's the holidays, it's Christmas time and a little bit of caviar pie isn't going to kill you. Maybe eventually, but not while you're eating it. So there are the eggs. And now I see why some recipes call for six eggs because the just the five eggs might make them a little mushy. But then again, maybe not. So we'll, we'll see the difference between the, the four hard-boiled eggs, the five hard-boiled eggs, and the six hard-boiled eggs, primarily the five and six. So your eggs are all together. So you take the springform pan and then you put the eggs at the bottom of the pan. And being a good cook, I'm putting my dish in the sink. And now spread the egg mixture along the bottom of the pan in a nice little round place that is going on. I should have maybe made six eggs. Anyway, it will be fine. See, again, with cooking, if, if it's not absolutely perfect and you're at a five, and you're not, you know, running a five-star restaurant and you have all your chefs underneath, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but it has to be tasty and it has to be fun to make. I mean, who doesn't have fun making a caviar pie, especially when you uh, get your son to, to mince the onions. Poor thing was crying this morning, but he got over it. It's that onion juice that got to him. I said, stick a toothpick in your mouth or wear glasses. And that helps you not cry when you are doing the onions. And it's nice to do the sweet onions. I've, I've used the regular white onions, but the red onions give it a nice, you know, a, a better flavor, not, not so strong, not so stringent. So I think it appeals then to more of everyone. Oh, these eggs are looking quite good. Oh, it's done. And there you have the eggs at the bottom. And now we're going to sprinkle on those red onions all over the eggs. But yeah, it can take a little bit more of a big push to get on top of the onions and sprinkle them around. Sprinkle the first ones in the middle, get more of them on there, and then you can tidy it up by putting the onions in places that they did not reach, like Star Trek, places they have never gone before. All right, and in the sink goes the dirty dish. And now we are ready to mix up the um, cream cheese should have about eight ounces. Now, again, a lot of recipes say when you get the softened cream cheese, I like to get it already whipped. I don't want to mess around with big chunks and then try and, and mess it around a little bit. 
you can get a little bit more, you know, maybe put 10 ounces, and then that witness with the air inside will make up for the density, and plus, it's already creamed, which, <laughs> for a cook that is in a hurry, or one that wants to take a couple shortcuts now and again, which I do, then it's nicer to have the already whipped cream, uh, whipped cream cheese, whipped cream cheese. Then you put in the sour cream, and this is three quarters of a cup of sour cream. And so you mix that all up together. So now I have smoothed the top with the cream cheese and sour cream mixture and it's ready to go into the refrigerator to chill for about three hours. So you need to cover it. Wax paper is a good choice, or you could also put plastic wrap on it. I wouldn't suggest tin foil, but wax paper is, is good. And then it's going to be in there for three hours, as I said, and I'll be back with you in just about a minute. I'm back. Three hours seems like one minute when you're with me, right? If we could do that in real life. But I have taken the caviar pie with the sour cream and the other layers out of the refrigerator. And so now we are going to get ready to put the caviar itself on top. So first we're going to open the caviar. These are two two ounces of caviar because it couldn't find a four ounce jar. But if you can, that's great. Otherwise, use two two ounces of caviar. Now, you should use a special spoon, at least something that is not metal, stainless steel, sterling silver, a bone or a mother of pearl kind of spoon will work best and it won't taint the flavor of the caviar. So we're very, they are going to handle these eggs very, very gently and put them uh, all into the strainer, which is now precariously set over my sink. And we're going to get it out, let it drain for a little bit, and then we're going to actually rinse it. So we have the caviar, one, two ounce, a uh, jar of caviar is in here, and now we're getting another two ounces in here. And then what I think I'm going to do is put a little water in the jar itself to get every little egg out of there. A lot of fish gave up their eggs to make this fabulous caviar. This is lump fish caviar. This isn't the greatest caviar but it's in a pie rather than simply putting it uh, the way you can with just the caviar and the, and the sour cream and the onions and the eggs and then really slowly tasting it. The pie is more fun. So now we have the caviar out. Oh, and look, there's even some left on this little spoon. We're going to have to put, put that in there too. Well, there, I'm going to do it that way. Good. Okay, then shake it up uh, very, very gently from the strainer. Now, this looks like good, good caviar. Sometimes you'll get the caviar in the jars and they'll have like a greenish tint. That's all right. But this is really nice, fresh caviar. And it's had its caviar bath. They use caviar, you know, for facials and things like that, but we're going to eat it. So maybe our, our skin will get the benefit of eating it besides putting it on. All right. So still draining it a little bit. And now we're going to put it here and drain it some more while we unmold the rest of the pie. So. There it is. We're going to spread it out a little bit more and then let it dry. So it, it doesn't seep through in and color the, the cream cheese and, and sour cream, etc. Okay, now big moment. Da, da, da. We're going to unmold it. So 
what I'm going to do is put it up here. This, as you know, was made in a spring form pan. So let's undo it and voila, there is the base of the pie. And that came out just nicely, isn't it? It, it makes me so happy. This is why cooking is so satisfying. When it comes out just like you were hoping it would and you say, oh, not bad. When it doesn't, well, you can always try again. As I say, it's the power of perseverance. But you have to have courage in the kitchen. That's what my son says. And I take him up on that. Now, again, while we're still draining the caviar, time to make our garnish, which will be some nice little scallions. So we're going to cut the scallions. And while, while I'm doing this, so how are you all doing? <laughs> when you're in the kitchen, sometimes it can be a lonely place if you're by yourself. Sometimes I have the TV on as a distraction. Sometimes my husband wanders through. Sometimes my 29-year-old son and uh, his 29-year-old fiance who live in the basement. They don't really live in the basement, but they do live in the house. Uh, with a place with their own entrance. And it's fun to have them around, but I really like to cook alone or with all of you because it's easier for me to concentrate on what I'm doing without the distractions of, oh, mom, you know, where's, where's the tide? Or, you know, <laughs> uh, when's dinner ready? And when can we have some of that caviar pie? So, uh, it's, uh, it's a, that's a nice distraction. Well, I think we have almost all of our garnish now. So we're cutting the whites of the uh, onions as well as the leaves. We'll probably use just the scallion part, but you know, why waste stuff? I think we'll just use all of it. It looks, it looks nice and it looks very holiday. And so I usually like to uh, cut the green onions and things like that with scissors, but I couldn't find them because my son did the dishes and he put them someplace where I couldn't find them. So we'll just do it with a knife and that's fine. Okay, that's good. That's enough. And now we're going to see how our drained caviar is, is doing. And now we are going to put it on to the pie. And you can make a design or you can just put it on any way you want. I mean, I will try and make a star. Okay, well that doesn't look too darn bad, as I must say so myself. And now we are going to further uh, decorate it with this, these scallions. I'll show you this before I put on. So use your imagination, and that's kind of a star, I think. Well, it could be even a tree, a black Christmas tree. Okay, so let's sprinkle, oh, that's nice. We'll sprinkle some green in between the circle around the edge and that nice thing in the middle, and then just put some of it also in the middle. And we are almost finished with our lovely caviar pie. Oh boy, my family's going to be happy to hear that I'm finally <laughs> not just taping it, but allowing them to eat it. That's the, that's the best part when you're having a family affair. All right. Well, there we go. And I have some nice little Christmas uh, knives, cheese knives that you can use, and that's a good way to serve it. Just a, like a little butter knife, that's also a good serving. But here you go, my present to you all, a lovely caviar pie, how to make it. Please have a very safe and happy, happy holidays to you all. Scott, take it away. Thanks, Kathy, and that looks amazing. I'm going to have to try your caviar pie. Now, for my New Year's, I grew up and we always had basically a friend's Christmas on New Year's. And so my mother and my dad would make a huge spread. Well, I kind of like quick, easy, so I can visit with people. So this is something you can make ahead of time. Stays warm for quite some time. 
get it done just before your guests arrive. And since it's, you know, New Year's of this year, you're probably home alone with just family so you can just put it out when you're ready. So what we're going to make is a beer braised pork. So what we're going to do is take some pork loin chops. I have four here for you. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to salt both sides of the pork loins and pepper. That's all you need. Salt and pepper. You're going to flip them over. Dry your hand off real quick. And again, salt. And it can take a lot of salt. Don't worry about it. And then pepper again. And what we're going to do is we're going to sear these on both sides in a cast iron pan in a moment and put it in the oven at 325 and it's going to cook for about an hour to an hour and a half and it gets really tender, draws in the flavor of the beer. And I'll talk about the beer when we get over to do that part of it. And then we're going to come back over here and do the vegetable part. We're going to do a great Parmesan crusted um, potatoes and some Parmesan Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take and sear each side of the pork chop, boneless that is, and uh, just in case, one of the great things you can do is have your butcher thin cut them because a lot of times they come very thick cut. These were thick cut. I cut them in half and they're the perfect size for serving. And they fit the tray, they fit in my pan, and I love the sound of it cooking and getting a nice little crust on it. And so you don't want to play around with them. You just leave them there, let them go, and you'll notice they'll start to get a little brownish up into the pink of the meat. That's letting you know it's, it's the oil pot, you can hear it, and that it's searing that side. You're searing the juices in. Plus, if you get a nice crust on it, even better when you bite into it. This is the beer that we're going to use. It's a dark beer. It's great because it's really flavorful. Choose the dark beer you would drink yourself to flavor your meat and braise it in in your oven. And you're going to have your oven set to 325. You want it that low because you want this to cook for a while. And then when we do the vegetable portion, they're going to cook, put, go in about halfway through. Actually, the potatoes will go right in shortly. But the broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts go in even later because they cook faster. All right, so let's see what we got. Yep. Got a good crust on that side. And you always try to flip them away from your face so that you don't get a nice little splatter in your eye or on your face or on your hand. All right, we're going to let that sear for just a second. Quick note, before you pour the beer in, the beer should be room temperature because when you pour it in, you don't want to cool the pan off completely. You still want the pan to retain most of its heat so that it continues to cook when it goes in the oven and doesn't have to heat that up all the way. Um, it will lose some of its heat because room temperature is obviously not the same as my pan. Um, but you'll want to also turn the stove top off when you pour, especially if you're on a gas stove, because you could cause a flash fire, because when you pour this in, it is going to cause the oil to kind of flame up a little, or go up a little bit. So you want to protect yourself and just turn it off uh, before you put the beer in. Let me take a look and see where we are on this side. Yep, we're good. All right. So we're going to go ahead and Turn it off. You can see there's no more flame. And I like to go right in the center. And slow. See how it's bubbling up? I told you. Just pour the whole 
I bought a big can of my dark beer and it's going to bubble up like that. Oh, you can just smell oh, just that nice little um, yeasty beer smell. Now we're just going to braise it in the oven. Open the oven and hopefully I can do this without spilling or burning myself. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Turn that like that. All right. And you're going to just slide it on in. Close it back up. And it's going to stay in there at least an hour to an hour and a half. Now we're going to come back over and show you how to do the vegetables, the potatoes, the broccoli, and the Brussels sprouts. All right. So now we're going to deal with our potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and our broccoli and cauliflower and we're going to just it's pretty easy we're going to just put a little bit of oil in each of the pans you don't need a lot it's about a tablespoon per maybe two tablespoons per and you just drizzle it on top and then you're going to take your trusty little spatula and you're just going to move everything around get all the potatoes covered. We're going to start with the potatoes. Those can sit, that oil is not going to do anything to them. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these potatoes and in this bowl we have some Parmesan and it's been mixed up with some garlic. And you're just going to take your potato and you're going to take one at a time and you're going to just dip it in that and it's going to crust the bottom and just lay it flat and it's going to create this wonderful little crust on your potato for serving. Because these take longer than the other vegetables to cook, you want to go ahead and put them in the oven as soon as you get them done if you've got your um, pork chops already going. So I'm just going to step aside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our Brussels sprouts. Move things out of the way of course. Now Brussels sprouts, you put them, um, I bought mine already sliced. If you buy them whole just cut them in half. Um, it's okay if some of the leaves fall off. They're going to get really tender and the undersides are going to get really crispy and you're going to love them. And with this, you just put them out on your cookie sheet. Make sure they go down because you want that side. It gets really caramely the sugars from this kind of ooze out at the bottom and get really tasty and crusty on the bottom. And again, you're going to want to take salt. Always salt. That helps with the moisture. A little pepper. And then my favorite, take a little bit of your Parmesan and you're going to put it, oh, that's more than a little bit on that one, huh? Just make it snow on top of them. And you're going to put these in about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes before your pork is done. Because if you put them in any sooner, you'll end up with really um, overcooked Brussels sprouts, which happens sometimes to me. But that's okay. Things that we talk about, you know, is that if you make a mistake, Learn from it and change it next time. It's okay. Now, with the broccoli and the cauliflower, you're doing the same thing you did with the Brussels sprouts. Mix it in the oil. Put it on the opposite side. And you can see we didn't do too much here. Um, it's just me and one other person that's going to be eating. 
this meal so I don't want a ton of leftovers but you have to gauge for your family how much you're going to need again I did um, probably 10 Brussels sprouts I don't know 20 florets or less of the broccoli and the cauliflower um, they're drenched in oil you're going to salt and pepper them again from a height and then I also grated fresh parmesan for both and it was about quarter a cup for this these two and you just again you make it snow over the top and then when your beef or beef hi huh, your pork today is pork um, when your pork is about 30 minutes from being finished you can go ahead and slide this in but keep an eye on it if it's finishing before your pork is done take it out it's okay if you have to warm it a little bit you can just shove it back in the oven for a couple minutes it'll heat right back up and you'll be ready to serve so uh, I think that's it for the recipes we'll be back in a bit to show you what it looks like New Year's dinner is finished we have our beer braised boneless pork chop with a rosemary garnish we have our Parmesan potatoes our broccoli and cauliflower Parmesan and our Parmesan Brussels sprouts. So Happy New Year from our families to yours. May 2021 bring you many blessings. Come back and join us again soon. Cheers.